This is Akash Vani in the program Spotlight. Now we bring you a discussion on International Conference on Green Hydrogen. The participants are Mukul Sanwal, environmentalist, and Anubha Rohatagi, anchor. With climate change a reality of our times, adopting renewable and cleaner energy sources are no longer a goal for the future but the need of the hour. One such source is Green Hydrogen, a three-day conference to discuss the recent advances and upcoming technologies across the entire green hydrogen value chain, showcase green hydrogen-related products, services and technologies to a global audience and other issues today in New Delhi. To discuss more about this topic, I am now joined by environmentalist Mr. Mukul Sanwal. Mr. Sanwal, welcome to the show. Thank you. Mr. Sanwal, for the benefit of our listeners, can you explain what exactly is green hydrogen and how does it contribute to a greener environment? Hydrogen is the simplest of the elements that we are known to us. It is number one in the atomic number scale and it can be stored. It is also the most abundant chemical element that is 75% of matter is hydrogen. The problem is that it is never found alone but in combination with some other elements. It could be water, it could yes. be ammonia, it could be organic carbon, organic compounds. So when we need to use green hydrogen, we need to look at how it can be manufactured or how it can be isolated from the way it occurs in the natural environment. And it is important for us because green hydrogen has relevance in steel and ammonia. These are industries, as the Prime Minister pointed out recently, where it is difficult to electrify. You see, we are looking at reducing carbon usage, which means the usage of fossil fuels. Now, steel is very carbon intensive. It needs very high temperatures. Mm -hmm. And we need more and more steel as we urbanize, as we go ahead with our infrastructure development. This usage is going to increase. And along with that, there will be carbon emissions. There will be pollution. And there are no substitutes. So that is one example of the value of green carbon in our manufacturing, in our industry, in our economic growth. Now, there are many methods to isolate a green hydrogen. So far, the emphasis has been on the use of coal. And it is called gray, gray or blue, blue hydrogen. Yes. Now, when we are looking at green hydrogen, we are looking at electrolysis of water, H2O, yes. because that has a high quantity of hydrogen. And the importance here is that we can use green energy, that is solar energy, wind energy, to do the electrolysis. So the entire process or entire chain is green. And there is no waste and that is also important because if pollutants come out of the process, then it's difficult to describe it as something as, as uh, green. Yes question is that we need high temperature to break down water by direct electric current. When we use renewable energy, the entire process is green. The idea is that India has stressed the solar mission earlier, national and global level. So we have huge potential for generating solar energy, which can be used to, for electrolysis and to produce hydrogen. Now, the difference here is that hydrogen can be stored and transported in a pipeline. Okay. Electricity needs the grid. And solar energy produced is not a steady source of energy because at night you don't have solar energy at all. And so the grid fluctuates. So you need special arrangements, you need a special grid. But hydrogen can be transported by pipeline, can be transported by tankers, it can be stored. The basic idea is that once you get into this kind of thinking and this kind of research or this kind of manufacturing, then costs are going to come down. We know from the example of solar panels, we know from the example of windmills, and now now, the example of batteries for the electrical vehicles, this as production increases, yes, costs come down and more money is available for R&D. So I think this is where the direction that the Prime Minister wants to take green hydrogen. India is focusing on different renewable energy sources, including green hydrogen, to achieve its net zero targets. And the government launched the National Green Hydrogen Mission in 2023. Can you elaborate on the role of this mission and the progress so far? You see, the Green Hydrogen Mission, part of a number of missions that the government of India has instituted, and this is part of the energy transition or sustainability transition that the government of India is pushing for the country, in line with what is happening in the world. But basically, it's more important for us because 80% of our oil is imported. And as we urbanize, as we grow, we are going to need more oil. And the price of international price of oil fluctuates. There are export controls in certain situations if there is trouble in the Middle East supplies can be disrupted so it is not in our interest 
as we become a ten trillion economy to be hugely dependent on growth dependent on an essential product like oil which is essential for our economic uh, activities of transportation and may also generation of uh, electricity so what has happened there is a the idea that has been pushed forward by the prime minister is slightly different from the earlier missions and i think that is important that this mission is unique as compared with other missions because it starts with an r&d component okay r&d component is very important in this and i think 50 years later we will realize the vision of the prime minister that it is not just the use of hydrogen that is important it is the r&d component that is important because that is the only way you can make it sustainable and the only way you can reduce the cost for the country as a whole so i think that is a distinguishing feature of this mission and because of that this mission is not looking only at the use of hydrogen it is looking at the production use and export of hydrogen yes. all these three components are important because it means really that we are going into this in a very big way we are just not meeting a target and saying how much hydrogen are we going to use or what percentage of our energy will come from hydrogen we are saying that this is going to be an export hub it is going to be a global center now that is the vision that we didn't have earlier on any of the products that we are going into we didn't have this kind of vision for solar or wind or even production of daily items you know of a usual item right so i think this is unique. then the other issue is that they have put in the 20000 crores till 2030 and what is it going to be used for it is going to be used for there is some identification there yes. that we will look at green ammonia we will look at methanol and we will look at steel areas which are difficult to electrify so a lot of thought has gone into it again what didn't happen earlier earlier we were just looking at a target what percentage of solar energy we didn't look at panel production we didn't look at anything now here we have gone into great details right at the beginning and we have also said that we will look at low carbon steel mobility shipping and the use of biomass and storage so number the activities the sectors have all been identified the scope is very wide, wide but it has been identified right so that you use money in a targeted manner and it is important because we are saying two other things we are saying that there will be two hubs in the country it is not just some random exercise that is taking place that again as i keep repeating that we are not meeting any a general target we're saying there will be two hubs initially and we will monitor this in the use of renewable energy and the supply chains pipelines tankers storage distribution regulations and standards so we are when you start looking at manufacturing and export you have a very different way of looking at the problem this never happened earlier that the transportation standards are important because you are looking at an export market yes but the most important issue of identifying sectors areas and getting into this level of detail is that there is a public private partnership for r&d this is also new earlier the idea was we were not looking at research we were looking at research. let me just bring in because you have brought in the public private partnership theme here i also wanted to ask you that what role apart from the government of course it has set up a certain mission to encourage green hydrogen but other than that how else can the government and the private sector play a role to encourage startups and entrepreneurs to invest in r&d and for the production facilities for green hydrogen first of all the question comes what comes first the supply or the demand the argument has been going on for a long time that we will encourage people to produce we will subsidize them we will encourage them and there will be public private partnership government will put in a lot of money but in this case again government has also said that we will look at minimum shares if you are looking at steel there will be some kind of regulation or standards that a certain amount of steel should be produced by green hydrogen okay. so they are ensuring that there will be a market or there will be a demand for what is coming out this kind of linkage had not taken place earlier because we were not thinking like this now for the first time we are looking at around us and we see that look at the way europe and north america and japan developed using the automobiles look at the way china has developed small solar panels batteries windmills so india is saying that is the kind of model we need to improve on it and we will take that get into the space of liquid hydrogen because we have the potential of renewable energy we have the potential of space and we have the technical capacity so i think this is important here that not just the public private partnership linking with the private uh, research institutions and creating a demand but government is also looking at skill development of the people who are going to man these centers if you are saying that i need a laboratory to do fundamental research you must have phd scholars who are going to produce the patents who are going to work in these laboratories who are going to work in the private sector companies 
Now that has also been thought out. So when you look at the entire green hydrogen mission and the vision that we will be a global hub, there is a good possibility or there is a real possibility that this will happen. And we have never had that kind of vision for any other mission in the past. You're mentioning uh, the India's aim of becoming a global hub and this is again something that Prime Minister Modi said in his inaugural address the other day that India aims to become a global hub for the production, usage and export of green hydrogen and its derivatives. My question to you is that what are the factors that give India an edge over others when the Prime Minister says we, that we aim to become a global hub? So it is coming from a you know, position of strength, it is coming from a position of confidence. So what are the factors, what are the things that give India an edge? The basic manufacture of hydrogen has something to do with the chemical industry. It is not something that is new to the country. We have been a center of chemical engineering, chemical industry, manufacture and export. And we have the capabilities in our institutes of technology and other institutions. And it is easy for us to take that leap to look at the chemical engineering sector, the scientists that are chemical discipline, and encourage them to start looking at these, this new area. So we have the foundation and we have the base. So that is the first element of confidence yes. that the Prime Minister has. And then secondly, the question of steel. We are going to be a huge steel manufacturer because our entire infrastructure, our entire urbanization, which has yet to take place, is going to be dependent on steel and cement. Do you think that the abundance of solar energy, like you were mentioning the solar mission that India has already, you know, put in place and the investments that India has made into the power grid, those are also the factors which give us an edge and would help us become a global hub for the production of green hydrogen? The question is that we have huge land area which is not cultivated and we can cover that land mass with solar panels. Very few countries have this kind of situation because these solar panels are accessible to the grid and they are not in mountainous areas, largely in the Thar yes. desert or in the, in the dry land areas, which are accessible to rail, road, not much human population, large areas. And with local habitants who can be given employment and who can work in the solar, to clean the solar panels, to do the maintenance. So we have that one calls the ecosystem to deliver right from the chemical industry to the solar industry and the national market. And with a little bit of effort, once we have a strong base, we an international competitor, which is the ambition of the Prime Minister. Yes. I want to be a global hub. So the G20 summit held last year under India's presidency here in New Delhi adopted voluntary principles for green hydrogen, which would help in creating a common roadmap. How important is international cooperation in promoting development and transition to cleaner and greener energy sources? Again, something that the Prime Minister spoke about in his address. Prime Minister has taken the lead in climate change in saying that we need to go for climate justice. It is not just about cutting emissions. We need to grow in a different manner. So now he's, the steps he is taking are emphasizing the same message he has given to the national community on an issue on which there is already existing international cooperation. He has also told the G7 that we should go for technology technology cooperation. Now, when you look at these things in a composite manner, it becomes very clear that here is a country, here is a Prime Minister who is doing whatever he can to contribute to the global problem and he is expecting the others to also help to do more. And now this is something new because so far countries have been saying that we have not created the climate problem and you need to help us, you need to give us money. For the first time again, I think the first country who has told the G7, who has told the international community that technology transfer should be given more importance. Yes. And he is emphasizing this point here again. Let us work together on the technology. International conference in Europe where India and Europe are going to partner. Yes. India will partner with other countries. So the idea is that where there is a global problem of climate change and there is a solution which is not very technical, which is feasible for other countries to adopt. So why don't we get do this together? And I think this is an important important message he is giving as part not only of Atman Nirbhar but as part of India's emerging global position. Well, here let me tell our listeners, as Mr. Sanwal was saying, that uh, in a significant announcement, India will be the exclusive partner for the European Hydrogen Week in November this year. And Mr. Sanwal, thank you so much for joining us in this uh, program and for the information and insights that you shared into the use and the importance of green energy. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on International Conference on Green Hydrogen. The participants were Mukul Sanwal, environmentalist, and Anubha Rahotagi, 
Anka. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsttalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044.